And we're back with game number two of this best of two. LGD taking on Fanatic. Now, LGD rolling into the day, did bit Remain. down and out. Their series, yeah, things not going the way they planned on day one. And now Remain. looking ahead to day number two, simply nothing. Yeah. Simply nothing that they could do in game one. I mean, Fanatic LGD just absolutely had their number quite bad. literally beginning with the draft. Looking Fanatic ahead now, Fnatic just rolling through, only dropping, if I'm not mistaken, one game all day yesterday. So sitting well atop the group standings and now with a big win over yet another top-tier Asian squad. No way, absolutely no way LGD can really afford to lose LGD this if they want to have a chance to, to get things back on track by the time the day rolls through. I'm AC. Joining me for the broadcast, as always, is Drasko. And yeah, man, this is the third. that was the third straight game that we've watched LGD just get utterly rocked. Yeah, I I really don't agree Ten with giving away Chen to Fnatic in the first place because they are probably some of the best Chen players Five outside of teams like me. Alliance, of course, who also run fantastic Chen lineups, or Enchantress for that matter, too. It's kind of He's the same of thing. Time. So I don't know if giving DK Chen to Fnatic is something that I would want to repeat just because they've already shown the fact that they can run the composition into the ground and it's very difficult to deal with. And LGD, of course, again, their first three heroes in the draft last game I thought were fantastic, and then their last two picks, I feel like, isolated them into such a bad spot that they just didn't have any way of clawing themselves out. So we'll see what kind of style they go for this game. I do love the fact that Fnatic is banning out Alchemist against pretty much all teams because any Chinese team pretty much will first pick that hero, and it's still viable in mid. It's viable in the Fnatic's safe lane to farm, even though whenever I see it farming people by Battle Furies, which I don't understand why. But Fnatic, they're going to get their hands on an OD for the second game in a row. And it worked out quite well for them last time. We'll see if LGD wants to take that DK or possibly take the Chen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and OD's a hero we've seen banned more often than picked. It's just most teams do not want to let him through, and LGD once again letting him go. And he's just such a good core hero that you can build around. I mean, he he's one of those heroes that's pretty obvious of what you want to do with him. You usually want to put him in mid. Occasionally, you can do something like offensively trial lane and secure him a solo lane and a solo safe lane. Remain. But he's a hero that just makes everyone around him better, especially when he's played Five in a lineup that can fight remain. early. And we kind of touched on that a lot. He is a hero that is easy to counter if you just simply he's pick up a couple of, of items. Pick Picking up BKBs makes his life very, very difficult. Having team fight that can counter initiate makes his life very, very difficult, especially once you have those BKBs up or any sort of magic immunity to begin with. And Fnatic, knowing that, drafted a team that could take fights early in game number one. And LGD, again, I mean, when you look at the way that the draft looked, seemed to pan out for them, it's just almost like they weren't on the same page. There was just some kind of disconnect in what their expectations were, uh, looking at the laning phase, which didn't even go that well, and especially in terms of their viability. Now, we knew that they would want to fight early, but once Fnatic really took charge and started taking towers, you're talking they cleared every tower except one off the board by 15 minutes, and that was just simply through good decision making and moving. This time, LGD going to go ahead and pick up the Dragon Knight. They are going to spend a pick on a Visage again. I do like that, actually, because what's going to end up happening is that if Fnatic do want to pick up the Chen, the push is already going to be quite a bit weaker because they're not going to have access to the DK. It also leaves the opportunity for LGD to pick it before the uh, the second band start coming out, too, which is nice. So Fnatic, what do they want to do now? They've already seen the Visage. They've seen the Dragon Knight. The problem with those two picks, if you're Fnatic, is that there's a lot you can do with it. You don't have to necessarily send the DK mid. You can send him to the safe lane, similarly to what Fnatic Five did in game one. Remaining. And if you send DK mid against OD, of course, a DK is going to get crushed because right. they'll never have any mana to use Breathe Fire. But it still leaves LGD pretty open in terms of what their goal is going to be. So now Fnatic have to show what their second pick is. Now, do they want to take the Weaver for Trixie like they did last time? He showed that he can soak some experience. Do they want to try to go with perhaps Bat and go for more of an initiation style of play, which I know that they are definitely capable of too? We'll have to see. But with an OD again, right it's... Oh, yep, they are going to go with the bat. So, there you go. Fanatics. And, you know, that just, bad. again, fanatic style. Because Bat's one of those weird heroes that isn't really what you would call a core hero, but he kind of is. But he's kind of not because he gets a lot of his farm from flash farming the jungle through Firefly. So, he doesn't soak up a lot of traditional... Um, a lot of traditional Ten time in terms of, of the gold that he needs. He tends to get a lot of gold to begin with anyway because yeah. he's always involved in fights. The... Burn damage from LGD's Firefly will often get him kills, so you'll see bad riders that end up with a nice kill count and so on and so forth. 
But, you know, again, just Fanatics play style, multi-core, multi-active uh, heroes is probably the better way to put it. I mean, Fanatics yes, every hero is active in their own bad. sense. But OD, Batrider, picking up something like if they had had the option of a Dragon Knight or a Weaver is a great example of another active hero. And, uh, you know, LGD, I mean, if you're in their chairs, you have to be scratching your head. That has to be your number one worry, and they are going to ban the chin out this LGD's time, just not going to allow that to, to happen bad. again. If you're in their shoes, you have to really just be scratching your head and saying, okay, how do we even begin to deal with that? Because obviously we didn't have the recipe right in game one. Yeah, I, I do love the Chen ban, though. Specifically because even if LGD wanted to take it, remaining. they can't because they have the first pick out of this ban phase if you're Fnatic. Five and it still leaves remaining. Enchantress, which I feel is still viable for LGD to pick up if they do want to take a jungler of some sort. Not only that, Reserve but it pairs time. well with Visage because of the damage and, of course, how fast you can get Soul Assumption stacks and just blow somebody up, which I think is good. And Fnatic only have one BKB carrier at the moment, which, of course, is OD. And, of course, he's going to be making the mech first. So options still pretty wide open for both of these teams, honestly. These... Two picks for each side don't really give a whole lot of clue as to what exact game plan they're going to do. But Fnatic have given away, I would say, more than LGD. Because with an OD, it's going to be mid, pretty mid. much. Yep. And the Batrider, if the OD is mid, that means that he's probably going to be going either Five top or jungling. Mid. So LGD can plan around that. They can decide what hero they essentially want to sacrifice <laughs> and send Fnatic against the OD. Yep. But it looks like their offlaner pick is going to be a Weaver. Yep, snatching up the Weaver here. Now, what interests me is we see... LGD now showing us a two-core lineup. Uh, Weaver, again, one of those active heroes. And that's a nice way to try and derail Fnatic's play style. And, and when you and I have talked about it before. When we do see Fnatic kind of come apart, when we do see them just wind up in trouble, it's whenever their active play style is really just interrupted, not even necessarily by a lot of ganks or anything like that. Remaining. Even just good movement, good decision-making, split pushing can be enough to take Five them out of their game plan remaining. to make them feel like they're, they're stretched too thin on the map so that you don't see these really, really well-executed, well concentrated push um, pick and push style that like that we saw in game one. I mean, once they started to group up and started to move across the map, they really didn't disperse that much. There were a few periods, yeah, where they went and farmed and healed up and waited on things to come off of cooldown. But for the most part, they cleared that off lane. They immediately collapsed on mid. They st stayed in mid forever. And even when they did back off, they would do something like immediately smoke. And, uh, and head to the top. That's Fnatic's playstyle, and oftentimes the only way to beat it is to do it yourself. So what we see out of LGD right now, I really do like, because you have this very active kind of damage-dealing basis with Weaver and Visage, in particular Visage, excellent at beginning to roam around. Dragonite, as we've discussed in game one, is a hero who doesn't need much more than levels and maybe one or two items. Just having boots plus a BKB can make him feel extremely potent if you can put him in a good position. Fnatic, though, gonna go ahead and snatch up the Naga Siren. Now we'll have to wait and see what kind of naga that's going to be if that's going to be a support or a farmer that's kind of my question too i feel like farming naga is actually pretty decent against lgd's lineup right now because unlike a lot of agility carries naga siren has a tendency to Ten build a more tanky remaining. type of build and you can go for the radiance if you really want to i don't think that's Five going to be the choice though remaining. it's very standard nowadays just to see the oh, mantis style the diffusal and you go for being able to just net somebody Fanatics and kill them with images it's pick. very similar to how a pl actually works but instead of being able to just make a whole army, you can make an army on demand with a Manta and Mirror image and then use Song to counter-initiate if need be. And as it stands right now, LGD don't have a team in the late game that's potentially capable of stun-locking a Naga to death. So there's always the opportunity to disengage if you have to and take fights on your terms, which is probably why we started to see resurgence in the hero pick in general. Mean? When she was nerfed after TI2 and they took away her base damage Five and nerfed Riptide, remaining. people decided to just not play her anymore. But yep. she, her whole her whole spiel is being able Reserve to take fights time. when you want to and you don't die to ganks. Right. That's kind of what the purpose of the hero is. So I do feel it'll be a, a farming Naga Siren, but we'll see. There's going to be a Lich pickup. Now that Lich pickup is LGD's fascinating. One thing I was going to point out, by the way, that I think is worth saying. Whenever you're talking about a Dragon Knight and a Weaver, two heroes that are well, Dragon Knight's not notoriously hard to track down. He's just a rush BKB hero, especially. But whenever I, we now look at what Fnatic's got to, got to bring to bear for those two heroes, Weaver Ten in particular, you've got remaining. Lasso, you've got Ensnare. The fact that Naga Siren is going to be able to not only, Five as you said, remaining. set up team fights on her own terms, but will have the Ensnare to lock down the notorious elusive Reserve Weaver, time. and then you have a lasso that you can spin through magic immunity on Dragon Knight, or if you need to grab, use it to grab the Weaver. That really does Fanatics lessen his effectiveness in terms of what he tends to bring to a team, which just is this guaranteed source of damage that is so hard to track down, and so hard to ever take out of a fight early. Now that Lich pickup is interesting, because you, when you see Lich come out, 
what the way that we've been seeing that Ten Lich be run the most remaining. lately is in an off lane situation. In fact, back going back to DreamHack Summer was when we saw it come LGD out a few times in a row. And what ends up happening is Lich, even if, if he's slow to get to a level six, he doesn't need that many levels to feel all of that effective. But what he can almost always guarantee you is the ability to give your carry a farming advantage over the enemy carry in situations where it's free farm versus free farm if you stick him in the off lane. Just the power of sacrifice over enough time, over five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes, you're going to end up getting a 10 to 15% advantage for your carry. And oftentimes, especially when you're talking teams that are very heavily based on magic immunity and so on and so forth, that can often be enough to let you rush one item out a little bit earlier, get some item a little bit quicker that will allow you to be a little more active across the map. I do love the Lich pick a lot, especially for the offlane purpose that you had mentioned. It just makes it so you just get more. And wow, Fnatic going to end things up with a Shadow Demon. So there's the physical damage dealer. That's the one thing that I was going to mention that Fnatic was kind of lacking at the moment. They didn't have any hero that was just a really hard hitter, but of course now they do, and it is going to be a support Naga Siren because of that. So it's going to be the Lich in the offlane. Naga Siren is just going to be babysitting bottom, probably going to have the Batrider jungling. And it looks like LGD, it looks like their choice to mid is either going to be the DK or the Windrunner. I would probably lean towards the Windrunner, just because you can potentially go for CS still and not get back repeatedly but no matter what Hani is going to be having a pretty good time in that middle lane one thing too about LGD is when you pick Earthshaker against OD even if you get a banish after the fissure the fissure is going to be there by the time you get out so if you get a good block you can still potentially go for kills when you roam which is something that LGD couldn't do last game to Hani because they just didn't have the lineup for it I think this is going to be a lot closer of a game I like LGD's picks a lot more this time because now as I mentioned, it's hard to lock down a Naga Siren before the song goes off, but if you get shackled, it's a different story now. LGD looking desperately to get a notch in the wind column. Not many of those coming their way in too, fre in too much frequency over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Fnatic, the complete opposite, having a very nice time in the groove stage so far. We are going to once again see both teams make their way towards the same piece of real estate. Heading towards the Radiant side jungle. We'll see how... I mean, when you look at LGD, LGD's level 1 is not that bad, but neither is... I don't know, Fnatic? Yeah, with one point already put in the Necro Mastery from Shadow Fiend. Yeah, I mean, it's, this was probably going to be a fight I would say Fnatic would most likely want to avoid. LGD got to begin poking their nose around. Giving the end around. They're going to ward this out. Now, very aggressive warding. Trying to... Yep, we're actually going to see one placed by Fnatic as they retreat back towards their middle lane. But once again, LGD looks like, other than dropping some wards, not going to be able to find anyone. Yeah, they spotted the ward, though, so they can de-ward that if you're Fnatic pretty much straight away. So nicely done by Fnatic. I don't think... Oh, they did start with sentries, actually. So Fly is going to be able to take that uh, rune ward down pretty much straight away, which is nice. And they also blocked the pole camp in the bottom lane, which they're probably not going to realize until they get there, which means a little less experience for the supports. The so LGD getting uh, a tiny edge there. Definitely nothing huge, but yeah, you can see they spotted out the ward as it went down. Haste rune, though, picked up uh, by Zhao8, actually. I thought they would give it to the ES to maybe go for a block. But looks like Hani's actually made the lane switch. He's going to be farming the safe lane. And looks like Aero's going to be mid. And yeah, really, so I, I love what LGD's doing here with the offensive potential of this. I, I'm a, a huge fan of three support offensive tri lanes that have a Windrunner in them. And that's basically what this is. I mean, the Windrunner, of course, will farm some. And she will work to get some quick items up. But the amount of pressure that this can put onto someone is is gigantic. Yeah, we can see Hani all by himself, basically sacrificing himself in this situation just to allow things to go a little bit better. No Tail and Era going to be duo laning at least momentarily here in mid. And now Fly is actually going to make his way to top. Siler with five stacks of, of Sticky Napalm going to be able to Shikuchi back to safety, but continuing to be stacked up. He's already picked up his Magic Wand, though, so he should be fine. But yeah, poor Hani. Not going to be having quite as good a game in game two, I don't think. The problem with this hero against the Trilin of ES Windrunner this is, is that they will dive him, like without a doubt. And the heroes that Fnatic have to try to stop that dive right now consist of basically a Lich and a Naga Siren. So they need to have TPs, because as soon as they start playing aggressive, one good Fissure will just end Hani's life. There's not going to be anything he can do about it. But he's playing it right, he's playing very far back, he's finding where the Earthshaker is, and he's going to be annoying, and I think DD was like picking his nose or something, because he just ate like four free auto attacks. But regardless, I like LGD's lanes uh, a little bit more this time. 
even though technically their Dragon Knight's not going to be having a fantastic time mid, Era's not really farming that well considering the circumstances. And here we go. Sentry is down. Looks like they want to engage, but spotting out the Visage, opting not to do so. Trixie, almost level 3 now. And Fly, trying to do what he can up here. They did go ahead and decide to switch it out, so they are going to be giving OD a little bit more breathing room, at least for the moment. And certainly Hani going to be happy about that. They're actually going to go ahead and move DD out and checking the rune spot. They spot the DD that will be handled by Fly and Company. No Tail going to rotate his way over. Drops a clarity. Says, hey, he's a nice guy like that. He knows how to share. I like it. It's teamwork. It's, it's heartwarming. If you've ever seen any pictures of Fnatic, most of their pictures consist of them touching each other. That's, that's kind of how Fnatic just <laughs> works. Which is fine. I got no problem with that. But yeah, I like the forcing reaction to send the Visage top just because it lets Hani get an experience range. Because these two heroes alone, the ES Windrunner won't kill him I unless he's like horrendously out of position. But top lane looks like Trixie is not really having the best time anymore. Oh, first blood. Yeah, blood. that's the first blood. Siler with one extra auto attack. That one point in, in Geminate attack paying for itself as DDC tossed out the long range soul assumption. Got him down to very, very little health and nice start for LGD. You know, this is, you know, again, when it comes to Fnatic, whenever you see them lose games, very, very often it's because they get the wind knocked out of them early. And yes, it's just the first blood, but certainly happening in this lane in particular, the lane we haven't even been focusing that much on, just a nice bonus for them. Yeah, I figured that LGD would clearly be doing well on the top lane. And the weird thing is they force a reaction and then they leave Trixie. So Fly has decided that he wants to help the OD more than he wants to help the Batrider in this case. And his, his CS, Trixie, is still 11 and 7 compared to the 7 1 of Siler. So he did a pretty good job at holding him down. The DK is kind of in the same boat. So even though LGD technically on paper might have the better lanes for the time being, they're not really utilizing him that well. So Fnatic, even though they did give away the first blood, definitely not the end of the world for them. They just need to be really careful about letting Hani get something because he's the mech carrier for this team. And if he doesn't get a chance, to get it early, the team fight for LGD seems a lot scarier than it would be normally. I'll tell you what's actually a little bit surprising, and hang on, we're going to have an ensnare onto DD. Taking a bit of damage, but able to make it away as there was no concerted pursuit effort, but Yao's actually doing a lot better than I thought he would. Now, granted, he's not in great shape. He's only got 8 CS, but the thing is, he's up against a duo lane as a melee, and uh, No Tail has been sacrificing now for four and a half minutes. Like, he should be, I feel like he should have even less than he does. He's actually on par with the OD, who has managed to soak some, uh, soak some creeps under his own tower. Era's actually not doing, as I think you had mentioned, uh, Era Denied. not doing quite as well as you might have expected. He is beginning to catch up now that he's getting some stacks in the Necro Mastery, but all things told, this, this, early, this early phase, it's a little, a little all over the place on both sides. Really anxious to see how they're going to begin to try to break this down. One thing that Fly is going to be excellent at doing on this Naga Siren is rotating and roaming. Um, the, the strength of, of just the two, you only need level two really, just the strength of level one Ensnare and level one Riptide is actually unbelievably good in a ganking situation. So he's going to be level three soon enough, but even aside from that, when he begins to roam, it's going to be a very important a very important time period for Fnatic to make sure that they actually get a lot of use out of that hero in the early phase. Yeah, absolutely. The, the cool thing, though, about this dual lane mid is that No Tail's going to be able to stack for Era, which means that even though his farm wasn't, I would say, ideal for the first couple of waves, he actually missed quite a bit. He's going to be able to go into the woods and triple raise and become like the richest Shadow Fiend in the world. And there's not really a whole lot that LGD are going to be able to do about that. Because if they go into the jungle, there's a good chance they're going to be running into basically five heroes because Trixie has also decided to go back into the jungle himself. So it looks like Era's not going to be taking the stack. It's going to be Trixie instead. Which either way, it's fine. I mean, farm is farm. Doesn't matter how you give it to your team. If you want to give it to the initiator to get a blink faster, that's good. If you want to give it to Era, that's good too. So they're trying to compensate by Trixie not having the best time in top by giving him a little bit of leeway in the jungle. So I think that Fnatic are actually fine here and Era is starting to pull ahead in the overall farm. So everything looks okay. So far, other than the first blood, Radiant's not a whole lot to be said. A little bit of trading in the paint there as a shatter raise does a smidgen of damage. But Trixie going to work in this jungle. Already has his Tranquil Boots up, so now just making money towards his Blink Dagger. Should have it up pretty quickly, all things told. And I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more aggression out of LGD in this bottom lane. Obviously, the rotation of Flydown 
is a bit of a confounding factor, but whenever you have the Windrunner, who's actually in really good shape, all things considered, sitting at 28 CS, and the Earthshaker, who just hit level 3, it seems like if they just brought someone down, they'd have a chance to really make something happen. Trixie, though, in the jungle, this and this might be what's keeping them from being too overly aggressive, the fear that the Bath Rider's just going to show up. In fact, their fears are going to be well-founded as we see them engage out. DD taking a lot of damage. Trixie going to go ahead and spin the lasso. They're going to try to get them both. DD will be locked up. Uh, locked down, rather. Zhao 8 now using his phase boots, but no mana. No mana at all for a win run. Will simply burn to death. Nice. And Fnatic mid, that's exactly what I was expecting to say to see LGD do a while ago. So rotate someone over, try to make something happen. Instead, Fnatic pulls the trigger. They now lead 2-1. to one. LGD can't really rotate to the bottom lane, though. That's the problem. When you sacrifice an off lane, if you look at the side of the map that Fnatic has, every single person on their team is capable of getting to the bottom lane very quickly. Even the Batrider was spending time in the jungle anyway. So if you're LGD, that's like the least likely spot that you're going to go and try to make anything happen because you're running into everyone. So if you're going to try to gank, it's probably easier to go mid. And getting caught out like that from LGD is a bit of a shock, actually, because they hadn't seen the Batrider in such a long time. They had to have known that he was going to be at least six. And neither the Earthshaker nor the Windrunner had any mana at that point. I don't really think they had any business being there. Here in mid, we can see the DK continuing to try to find, try to find what farm he can. Era certainly, as you mentioned, starting out so slow and so uh, so ineffective has, has more than made up for that. Now sitting at 50 CS, and the DK finally did get shut down. The Radiant's harassment potential, the, har the harassment attack. damage coming out of Max Stack on Necromaster just way too much fortified. for them to try to deal with. But now, again, the, the both teams just kind of kind of hanging back for the moment. No tail is just about level six as well. So, I mean, you're talking pretty even experience split between Era and No Tail. Having that attack. extra bit of damage from Chain Frost, if they do want to decide, if they do decide to start trying to team fight, certainly going to be a nice help. Yeah, I think that right now Fnatic are in fantastic shape. They made a decent recovery, considering, again, Trixie got first blood of the laning phase, wasn't going, I would say, that great. But look at how poor this Dragonite is, man. He's got 14 creep kills, and his top tower is going to get denied on top of that. So, Fnatic not giving LGD anything. They're taking away every single bit of gold that they would have gotten Radiant's otherwise. And this is a very NDI. similar theme to what they did in Game Radiant's 1. They didn't have a huge experience lead. They had a massive gold lead, and they used that to take team fights and then get an experience lead on top of that. But LGD, they rotated over 3 to mid lane. They're going to do some damage to the tier 1, but what else can they really do? Right now, Fnatic just playing. You know, this is, again, this is almost exactly what we saw in Game 1. They're just playing so patient. They're, they're not scared to group up, but at the same time, they don't feel the necessity to to try and make something happen just because they're grouped. They're just accomplishing their secondary, or their, their primary and secondary goals. Just saying, okay, Aaron needs farm. He's got farm. Let's get our bat rider his blink tag. I really think when the bat gets the blink, that'll be the big, the big go moment for them. They'll be able to just start roaming the map and trying to make things happen on the back of the uh, of the Naga Siren, the Shadow Fiend. Well, no, excuse me, not the Shadow Fiend, the uh, OD and the Bat Rider. Like those three heroes are just so potent in what they give each other, the way they help each other um, in small skirmishes, and that would free up so much room for Era, who. Frankly, at this point, doesn't even need that much room. The guy is getting rich, sitting now at 60. Nope, make that 63 CS, because that's what Shadow Fiend does. He hits buttons, and he kills everything on the map. And yeah, the more farm he gets, the scarier it's going to be for LGD. If he gets a quick BKB, it is going to be so tough to deal with his damage output in these fights. And that's not even including the OD, who is being left alone now. So Hani has a free lane. Even though they've rotated over a lot of people to mid to try to pressure on Era. Fly is going to be level 6 soon, so that means that anytime you initiate, if he's around, if the fight's going bad, which there are 5 mid, by the way, just pointing that out. Oh, Radiant's Courier down. Courier. And the Courier down. There's going to be a Shackle. Does not latch. Siler is back there. There's the Chain Frost. That's going to get at least two good bounces. Yao going to be cleaned up by it. And another one. Going to track Siler down. And they're trying to pursue out Siler. He will be spotted and lassoed out. There's that lockdown we were talking about during the draft, Draxel. Whenever you have that many ways to control a Weaver and keep him in one spot, he becomes easy pickings. They lose the OD, but they pick off the Weaver and the DK. And Fnatic once again doubling up LGD as we cross the 10-minute mark. Their lead not nearly as big as it was when we were heading in this direction before. It's hard to imagine in game one, four minutes from now, if we were in game one, there would be one tower still standing for LGD. That's how dominant Fnatic was, but... Nonetheless, they have secured themselves a slight lead in both gold and experience at LGD. 
Got to be feeling a, a little bit of a worry that, de you know, deja vu all over again. This is kind of how it felt before. Fnatic just attack. taking these little fights and, and making sure they come out ahead. Well, honestly, LGD should have come out on top there. I mean, they had five mid. They had no idea that Siler was behind the tower. They picked off the courier, so it wasn't an absolute disaster. But they lost the two most important heroes, DK Weaver. That's the two that you really don't want to get killed. So, very nice reaction coming out of Fnatic. I'm going to let the whole Draxel thing slide, <laughs> Sorry. by the way. I, I, it's, no, it's, I it's fine. Excited. I was excited. I was excited, and I made a mistake. Dude, <laughs> it happens to everybody. I just thought it was funny. But, like, Fnatic right now, again, Hani's going to have his mech really soon. So the next time the LGD decide to take a fight like that, if they want to man up and dive behind a tier 1, there's going to be a mech on top of the team fight that Fnatic already do have, and Song of the Siren is now up on fly. So if they do something super aggressive like that, they can re-engage whenever they want. They can force a fight, actually, too, because they're smoked up here in mid. If they want to use Song to initiate and TP to the tower, they can do that. Well, they're going to have to come quick. There it is. Song comes out. Doesn't affect the familiars. Being dodged out. They are going to get a couple of stuns off, but here we go. All grouped up. Ulti goes off on both. No tail. Though. Here's the counter initiation. No tail taking a lot of damage. Trixie's there with the lasso. Yao going to be cleaned up. The rest of them have to pull back. They've got one for one so far. They're going to try to pursue this out. Siler right on the heels of Trixie, who dodges the who dodges Weaver and the power shot with his own astral imprisonment. Double kill for Siler. They're going to try to clean it up. Another good Fisher coming out from DD and Era. Picked off with a soul assumption from the low ground. LGD coming out ahead here. And DD really with two excellent fissures in that fight. The disjoint Fnatic's chain of initiation. They dropped two big ultis. The OD ulti, and Sanity's Eclipse, and Requiem of Souls. But even that was not enough. The survivability of LGD really showing itself. And they end up coming out ahead and making up some ground. They get six to five. That was a bit weird by uh, Era. He, like, requiem did the super far back of the fight. If you're going to commit to a fight that hard, and you're not going to wait to finish the mech on the OD, at the very least, stand in the middle so your requiem does some damage, because that might have been enough to force LGD back completely, as opposed to them turning it around and taking the fight after the fact. So, questionable tactics by Fnatic. It made sense to use the song to initiate. Like, I don't have any issue with that. But the positioning of Fnatic in general during the beginning of the fight made, like, no sense to me at all. Right. And there just wasn't enough damage to follow it Radiant's up. And plus, I don't think Hani had attack. any imprisonment stacks at all, so his Sanity's Eclipse just didn't really do that much. And of course, it is only level 1. But I, I don't know if that's really the way that Fnatic Radiant's wanted to go about that. That loss is actually attack. huge for them, because they lost Shadow Fiend, they lost Hani, and they lost their tower. Hey, take a look at the gold graph. Dipping and basically reversing. LGD now with a slight lead. The experience still in favor of Fnatic, but certainly Dyer's top has been cut down attack. considerably. LGD looking to make something happen of their own. Tier 1 bottom would seem to be the target. Fnatic slowly making Dyer's their way over. They've got one hero not attack. there. That's going to be Era. Era is going for his BKB first, and wisely so. We're going to see Fly just blown up. Just utterly blown up behind his own tower. Never had a chance. And, you know, th this Radiant's is the kind of thing that, you know, everyone makes mistakes, Radiant's but, what, like, compared to the way Fanatic played game one, just, you know, what was Era doing there? He just, he had no one there. He knew they were coming. He was well aware that there are multiple heroes coming. Just, you know, one of those silly mistakes that you make, but you make enough silly mistakes early on, and it becomes really hard to win, even if you're not making mistakes later on. Yeah, it was Fly, by the way. Who oh, got excuse picked. me, Fly. Um, no, it's just okay. I was like, I was looking at the map, and I was like, yeah, they don't have any vision. It's really easy to land gank, and then he gets land ganked. So it makes a lot of sense for LGD to go for the early game aggressive style because they have the heroes for it. So it should be expected that they're going to go for the safe lane tower because, of course, mid and top are already dead anyway. So Fnatic right now, they're definitely on the back foot. They don't have a whole lot of map control. Their Shadow Fiend is still pretty far away from a BKB, another 1300 gold, give or take. The one nice thing is that Hani should have his mech by the next fight, but LGD is also going to have theirs which means that it's not going to be as big of that game-breaking advantage. Like, for instance, if mid Hani had a mech, that fight probably would have been totally different. At the very least, we probably would have seen Era actually go up and get a decent Requiem as opposed to just using it for the slow. And there's a uh, smoke up here by Fnatic. They're going to catch you out. Yeah, lassoed back. Fnatic there to blow him up. Well-aimed Shatter raises. Not that they even needed it. Had plenty of damage to clean him up. There was a thought about a reaction. The TP was canceled, though. And down at the bottom, Hani. Still working on the mechanism. Looks like it's going to be on its one that's way to him, and it is. 
So Mech now complete. That increases their team fight potential quite a bit. After that gank attempt, LGD going to go ahead and take a shot at Roshan. They do have the medallion up on the visage, so the armor reduction certainly going to uh, expedite the entire process. And Fnatic really in no position to do anything about this. They lack any vision of that side of the map, no vision of the Rosh pit whatsoever. And after they would have had to hoof it anyway, after all heading to top to begin with. So Roshan, a nice little pickup for LGD, and they are quietly grinding themselves into a decent little lead as we cross towards the mid game. Yeah, they got totally caught up by that. You could tell Fnatic had no idea until it was too late, because if they knew the Roshan was going on, they would have just pushed top, and they would have got at least a tower, because that thing was at half HP. Even with a Glyph, LGD wouldn't have been able to commit to both Roshan and defending the tower, so LGD get even farther ahead. Great play by them. Fnatic, once the BKB's done on Shadow Fiend, I think they'll be okay, but they don't really have a whole lot of damage yet. They need level 2 Sanity's Eclipse, they need this OD to get another item, he needs his own BKB, and we definitely need to see Trixie get a 4 staff so he can actually pull somebody out of the fight. The Earthshaker has done a fantastic job of being disruptive during these fights. DD just sits on the back line, even though he's only level 5, if you throw out like 2 or 3 fissures a fight, that's more than enough. Right. Just getting stunned out and being stuck out of position or being blocked is more than the damage, basically, that Earthshaker is capable of. It's more about getting somebody out of position. And speaking of, Hani is, like, in panic mode down here in bottom. Yep, Hani just kind of hanging out for the moment. We'll be able to TP away and got away just in time. One of those moments when, yeah, always fun to see. But 7 to 6, 13 kills in an 18-minute game. Fnatic and... LGD beginning to spend a lot of time in each other's hip pocket. Seeing them spend a lot of time grouped up. Taking a look at Yao. He's got his Aegis, obviously, his treads. Has not really put work towards anything else because he just doesn't have the money. Does not have the cash. We're going to see the BKB done on Shadow Fiend. Another very, very big item. That Blink Dagger on the Bad Rider, obviously, up for a while. And what's happening is Fnatic is getting up the, their most important mid game items all at once Mech, Blink, BKB. August doesn't really have much here, does a lich, but the three most important have come out already. You take a look across the board on the other side. The Weaver having a BKB is actually a pretty damn big deal, but when you have two disables that go through magic community, I wonder if investing in that right off the bat is really worth all that. Well, it's because of the magic damage. Right now, Aerith is still going to be predominantly using raises for his damage output. His right click isn't sufficient to actually kill people, especially if you're against heroes like DK, who have massive armor, right? So. If he's only raising, even if you get disabled with Ensnare, you're still not going to be taking that much damage, which right. is the whole purpose of the BKB in the sense. And it also allows him to pretty much get a time lapse off for free, unless he gets caught before he BKBs at all. And uh, top, bottom tier 2 is taken by LGD. Fnatic wanted to try to counter push mid, but just DD being here is enough to push them back. And I think that kind of sets the tone for how poorly this game is going for Fnatic right now. And LGD doing an excellent job of taking away map control. Uh, from Fnatic, and not just the in the obvious. He's like, yes, they took the bottom tier ones, so they should be able to invade the jungle fairly easily. But it's not just that. Their movement, they're moving, they're they're baiting Fnatic into move movements, then being in position, then going back to strangling them out elsewhere. We can even see their emphasis on vision here, dropping down a couple of wards to make sure that if that jungle is occupied, they're aware of it, and they can go punish someone for it. Three minutes left until the Aegis is reclaimed. We can see. Oh yeah. Yep, caught up, about as hard as you possibly could be. Second time this has happened to him, he will lose the Aegis for free. And he's got a team on the way, there's gonna be the ulti used. Now Yao will be cleaned up, looked like LGD wanted to engage if they could have got there in time, but they had to hoof it, the tier 1 was up if they wanted the TP to it. But instead, just opting to say, okay, I guess Yao's dead, we'll just slowly make our way up and just be ready to defend the tier 1, anticipating the obvious push coming after the loss of their carry. Fnatic can't push, that's a sad thing. Even though they just killed the DK twice, they can't push this tier 1 because they don't have the heroes for it yet. The thing that they have to do now is take it to the late game, because Shadowfiend, OD, even the Naga Siren, granted she's like broke at the moment, she can get something, you know, she can get maybe a defusal if she gets lucky during the later stages once they start getting some towers, and then you can maybe win a team fight if you get a hex on the OD and get a good opening. They always have that to fall back on, of course, they have the Naga Siren song too. Dyer's the only person with the BKB on LGD hex. is the Weaver, so if they want to, they can just wait until he BKBs and then song and isolate him and try to kill him that way. But a good player will probably never do that for you. They won't BKB until Dyer's after the song for that specific reason. So it's still a very tough spot for Fnatic. LGD definitely still do have control, even though they just lost their Aegis with the DK. 
And LGD rotating back towards mid. A lot of targets there if they can find one. Trixie. The most obvious. Yep, he's going to be lassoing out Yao, dragging it back towards the team. This should set a fight off. The shackle did not latch, and Naga just going to use the song. The familiar's trying to keep an eye on him. So they are not affected by Siren Song. And the Fisher actually caught him. Fly now going to be chain stunned and cleaned up. And DD once again tossing the rocks from downtown, securing another kill. And LGD didn't get everything they wanted there, but hey, they didn't walk away empty-handed either. And getting a support's not bad, plus that's a level 1 song. It's a 3 minute cooldown, that's actually a pretty darn big deal. So, LGD now feeling a bit more comfortable to potentially push the tier 2 mid, that's gonna be probably their next target. It's a very hard tower to push though. The one thing about Fnatic's team is that they have no lane spam outside of raises, right? Whereas LGD, they have Power Shot, they have Breathe Fire, they Dyer's have the uh, Fissure from the Earthshaker. Attack. They have a lot of ways to burn waves down and a lot of ways to defend towers, even by only sending maybe one hero. Which is why Fnatic was having such a hard time pushing into the tier 1 mid or even the tier 1 top. Heck, just the ES being there was enough to deter them. So, Fnatic still on the back foot here. LGD will uh, start to siege the tier 2. I'm not sure if they're going to kill it per se, but there is no glyph, so we'll see how hard they can bet. As of right now, certainly not looking to go anywhere. At top, though, ARA is split pushing. We'll take the tier one finally out of top. Dyer's so top LGD not opting to commit this time, not wanting to take the chance of a lost skirmish. But yeah, I mean, at this point, ARA is going to begin to feel very fat very soon. They're going to have to account for him. He's already picked up an ultimate orb. We'll see exactly what he wants to do with that. He does have his BKB up as well. So his own survivability quite high. Taking a look at Yao, still struggling to get his BKB, but he has made progress. Needs about 1,600 gold, and he'll be able to finally feel like a DK should. Rest of the heroes across the map. Windrunner, opting for the four staff mech build. Very typical stuff. Will be a Deso build coming out on Siler, so just looking to up his DPS and make sure that when it comes to trying to counterpunch, against the Shadow Fiend like this. And just having an item that will allow you to just blow him up is really what you want. Just anything you can do, because you only have so much CC on your side, but it is CC it's being wielded very well. And they actually, depending on their chain of initiation, have a decent amount. They just need to be able to focus fire that Shadow Fiend as quickly as they can, because as you've mentioned, once the BKBs come out on their own team, which we already have one, soon to have two at the very least, uh, OD begins to fall off tremendously, and it will be so reliant on the Shadow Fiend to just give you that right click. Yeah, and he's working on it right now. I think he's going for a Manta. He picked up an ultimate orb. Manta is not horrible here, but finishing a complete Manta, I don't necessarily feel gives you that much either. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you a whole lot of damage. It lets you cause a little bit of confusion in the fights. The images do okay DPS, but I probably would have rather seen him get a pure damage item, to be honest, because as it stands right now, Fnatic don't really have the same kind of team that they did in the first game, where they just had a gigantic gold lead and that's how they won. This time they're actually behind in gold, but ahead in experience. So they need somebody who actually packs a punch, and they're relying heavily on Trixie's initiation at this point too to pull people out. Now granted, they've caught Yao twice, which is great because it means he doesn't have a BKB. They can't always expect that to happen, so they need to make sure that they're going to have enough punching power in these team fights to actually take someone out. And Trixie? Getting himself out of dodge. Not yet, though. There's a beautifully shot Shackle off the creep. Trixie eating some right click, but the Song of the Siren gets... Oh, the Vistage Familiar stunned him out, and they got him anyway. Second time LGD's been able to go fishing and find something, and that time they got themselves a bat. But uh, very well played on both sides, actually. That was a, a really fun sequence of events. Now we're going to see LGD, perhaps, with the initiation of the Bad Rider lacking. Look to go ahead and take a tower. And yeah, they're going to glyph it, but I don't think it's going to matter. The Bat would have bought back by now, just trying to buy time to keep them off the Tier 3s. It would seem this is one of only two Outer Tier Towers remaining for LGD at this point. And they're going to be rotating up possibly to the top lane. They just go ahead and start to slow push. Roche is going to be back up in 60 seconds as well, so nope, never going to mind. They'll probably take an ancient stack and then double back to the Roche bit. Yeah, Roche should be fairly easy for them too. By the way, I thought Arrow was getting a Manta. He's making a Scotty. <laughs> Very nice. I was not expecting that choice. Just 
it gives you a lot of stats, it does give you some damage, and it allows you to go for lifesteal on top of that if you want because he's a ranged hero, but it's a really weird choice to me actually. I, I, they're relying heavily on Hani's damage output right now, and there's double BKB about to be done on the side of LGD as Yao's about to secure his, so at least in those two heroes' sense, you're not going to be doing that much damage, at least in Hani's front. He'll be able to kill the supports maybe, but he's de definitely not going to do anything to a DK or the Weaver. So. Interesting choice. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to give him what he needs to actually carry this, but if they let the game drag out, a Scotty is still a decent late game item if you can supplement it with other items. The net worth we can see era is on top, but not tremendously so. Weaver's right there with him on the other side. And you've got the two bottom lane farming heroes, which were, of course, the OD and the Windrunner. Given an OD start, given he was up against a tri lane for the majority of that early game didn't have a, or, yeah, the majority of the laning phase, he was in a, either a one-on-two or a one-on-three. The fact that he's doing as well as he is is quite impressive. He's sitting at just one, one, and five as well, so it's not even kills that have allowed him to make it up. They do manage to prompt a reaction out of LGD. And now going to loop back around and through the river. So easy to forget. I mean, you see how active these familiars are. It's so easy to forget just how much vision these things grant you whenever you use them effectively as a visage. Well, the nice thing about familiars against Fnatic's lineup is that they don't have any way to directly deal with them. Um, I mean, they can hit him with OD, but they've been so scared to take full-fledged team fights that Hani never has the opportunity to do it. It's not like last game, where he was just throwing out casual orbs because they were so far ahead, it just didn't matter. When you can't really focus familiars in fights if you can't kill the heroes. Right. So, LGD is still in a very dominant position. I'm surprised they haven't just started and forced a Roche fight yet, honestly. I mean... There's no blink on the ES, so it's going to be a bit harder to take it. You can see deep wording here, but oh, haste on Yao. No tail caught out. There's a flame break. Shackle doesn't last. They're not going to need it, though. So Fnatic losing their Lich. And Lich, other than that one really nice Chain Frost and the fact that he denied a lot and slowed down the DK a lot, haven't really felt a big impact from him. And, you know, usually that's how it's going to go. But here in the Roche pit, LGD. Looking to take themselves and wow, well, he actually BKB'd there. I don't know if he fat fingered it or if that was He was just... expecting a song probably. Yep. That's what they were thinking. Makes sense. Nonetheless, Deso done. Fresh Aegis in his inventory. And LGD really have turned this game around quite admirably. They're up to about a 4,000 gold lead as we approach 30 minutes. And they've actually brought the experience almost down to even. Yeah, LGD, their team composition is tough to deal with. If you're Fnatic, if Fnatic needs a lot. They have a team where they're having a Shadow Fiend build, honestly, what I would consider a pretty greedy item. Even though Era is tanky, he still only hits for 200. Now, as a Shadow Fiend, that's really not that hard. Sure, you can slow the DK through the BKB when you auto attack him, which is kind of cool, but the Weaver doesn't care about Scotty because he's going to be Shikuchiing all over the place. So. It's really only that effective against just the one hero, and outside of that, Era is the only person who can really hurt the DK at all, mm -hmm. unless he gets caught out. And yeah, this game has at least had a propensity of getting caught, but sooner or later, LGD, I think, are going to become uh, too powerful to deal with. Era, though, he's leading the CS by a good chunk, which is impressive, considering they haven't had that much map control. They're starting to force LGD back on their side of the map now, so they have a little bit more than they did previously. But I think Era needs like a pure damage item next. Like he honestly needs like a crit or MKB or something like that. And then I think they might be okay. You can see. Fnatic trying to force something at the bottom tier one. This is the last tier one up on the map. Fnatic quite a bit behind in map control. I've lost all but one tier two compared to the three freestanding tier twos from LGD and one tier one. And they're just going to be forced away, just not feeling like they can really engage into them. The thing is, this is going to start to get worse and worse now. Once a Weaver gets to this point where he's not only survivable, but he's doing damage, he can split push like hell. He's going to be able to pick off many heroes he just happens to ice later to find. And he's very good at, at tower defense because, you know, the hero is just impossible to kill, so he can make it very difficult for a, one or two people to push a tower down. And LGD is actually going to go ahead and get on the aggressive. Smoking up under their own tower, and they're going to make their way across and into their jungle. Going to see what they can find. They may they may very well end up finding Trixie. It uh, looks like it might be the case. Shackle almost had a chance to latch up. Fly, there's going to be Song of the Siren. And 
Just level 9, so long cooldown again, as you had mentioned. And the Visage Familiar is once again on, on the spot. They just can't shackle. Nothing to latch it off of. Zhao 8 rushing up. Here comes Silo. They're going to try to re-engage. There's an ensnare. And the ulti from the high ground. BKBs go off on both sides. And out comes the Lichol. We're going to see Trixie track down. And LGD just running them over at this point. Tani comes out trying to fight it out. Era on the run. And Yao, who has had such a struggle of a game, finally with that magic community, becomes a factor. DD with another nice fissure that managed to kill off Era. And now No-Tail next on the list. And look at the damage output Siler has. Yao again has just had a terrible game up until this point. He was sitting at 1-4 and four before that engagement. Now, with his magic immunity and just having the armor reduction from Siler to help with his own damage output, Radiance LGD going to go ahead and decide to start Radiance pushing the Tier 3s. And Fnatic, really, I mean, their lineup, it's the same, it's the same thing we saw in Game 1, really, just on the, other sh the shoes on the other foot. And as you said, their lineup just has matchup problems here. It's just a much better draft, and LGD is executing their lineup very, very effectively. Yeah, this is much more the LGD I was expecting when uh, when I saw them play the other day and today. They're just making better decisions. I like their draft a heck of a lot more than I like their draft in game one. And it's not to say that it's necessarily a peer out draft, but I do feel like they have a slight edge. Era, if he gets enough time, the tides could turn. He could get enough to potentially carry this if he gets a really hard damage item, but the, the thing is he just had to buy back to prevent his base from dying, which is definitely not something you want to do. The thing that's astounding to me is the fact that he's still so far ahead in terms of overall CS as LGD, even though he's not even really been raised spamming that much. Mm. And I mean, Siler's in second place, pretty much neck and neck with Hani. Hani, though, he's working his way towards that Hex. That's another huge thing, because if they manage to catch out somebody with the Hex before BKB, that hero will die pretty much instantly because of how much damage that the OD can do in that point in time, of course, with Era and the, the rest of the follow-up for Fnatic. So it's not totally over, but it's looking a little bit tough. Definitely an uphill battle for Fnatic. Zhao8 actually working on getting a side device of his own. And having already picked up the ultimate orb, has made some decent progress towards it. Having another, another lockdown on their side, just to lock down, in particular, the OD and, uh, and the Shadow Fiend would be just a, a gigantic boon. I mean, right now, their mobility and their ability to engage from range is what's really spelling LGD's success, in my opinion. They're just, they're able to just track them down so effectively. You want to point out the play of DDC has really been excellent on the Visage, has stuck with it twice after being interrupted by the Siren Song and used his familiars to secure kills. And yeah, like, I mean, like you said, it's, it's, just, it's supports. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it certainly is a little bit of extra gold and experience that they're not going to want to give away. Now the Earthshaker's actually picked himself up a Blink Dagger, so he's got some mobility. Got a little giddy up and go in those big old paws of his. But for now, again, the game, all things considered, it has been quiet, especially now that we look and see 21 kills in 34 minutes. That's just not as active as we're used to seeing. Yeah, I think both teams are a bit scared. Oh, Siler, what timing on that Shikuchi. I don't think he realized how close he was to death. Yep, he bkb I guess he assumed it was just the bad. No, he's got a time lapse away. Yeah, it's like he turned and fought then BKB'd, and obviously Lasso goes through BKB, so best case, he was just going to get Lasso'd pulled back and then maybe try to fight afterwards. And nonetheless, a little bit of a bizarre sequence of events there. But he does manage to make it away, so can't complain too much. His Aegis actually faded when that lasso hit, by the way. So if they killed him there, that would have actually been a death. And he has 5,000 gold. So that's a really big kill that Fnatic just missed out on. And because, like you mentioned, DD has a blink, that's terrifying for Fnatic because they actually don't know it. There's going to be that one free initiation where DD just goes in and gets a dunk. And then you're like, well, we just <laughs> lost the fight because of that. So LGD is still looking to be in pretty good shape. I do love the fact that Fnatic's not just conceding the map, though. They're always smoking up. They're always yeah. forcing their position to make sure that when they do retreat, they have something to farm on the way back to base. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing in terms of keeping efficiency up because it allows Era to stay ahead. And Oh, no, Tail might be getting caught here. He is just going to go and TP away, knowing that Shackle's on cooldown. Makes it away without a problem. But, uh, but no, I agree with you. It's, and they, and you know, it kind of comes back to what I said earlier. Is a bunch of little mistakes end up putting you in a, in a position. Well, hang on, Trixie, actually. He and Era spawning out Yao. We're actually going to see Era go ahead and pop his BKB, just really not wanting to take a fight with Yao and, and the Visage familiars there. But a bunch of little mistakes 
early on and up, it's not that they lose you the game immediately, or, or even in the mid-game. It's the fact that they just make it so much harder for you to get as much as you should out of good decisions later. Because you're still making up ground, and well, there's the blink shown. Really going for the kill on Hani. Fissure, plus one little punch. And a free kill in the back pocket of DD. Uh, losing Hani at this point is so bad for Fnatic. He is so close to his Hex. He was he pretty much had enough money for the Mystic Staff actually when he died. And then all he would have needed was to get the Void Stone and he would have been good to go. So getting high priority kills like that at 36 minutes in, that's almost a full minute off the map for him. And that's more time that LGD gets to be safe from things like Hex Initiation. Because if somebody gets pulled out from a lasso into a Hex, there's kind of no saving that here. And that's really the problem. And Siler, interestingly enough, isn't going a... Uh, butterfly or anything like that. He's actually just going to go straight hard. So he is extremely tanky right now. I think he realizes that there's still some time before Fnatic's physical damage output really comes to fruition. And nice deny by Zhao 8, by the way. Did you see where he came from, by one. the way? That was actually yeah. sick. He, yeah, came across Casual that way. Casual staff. Yep. Casual four staffs. Chases away the illusions against the deny. That was sick. <laughs> it was just sick. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just like, I like the choice of heart, actually. It allows him to not get bursted down within that lasso hex. Mm -hmm. Now, he only has 2300 health, which I say only, which is actually quite a bit for a weaver. <laughs> yep. But they might still be able to get him in that. We'll have to see what Era's next item choice is going to be, though. He might just go something like Butterfly, just to prevent the weaver and the DK from being able to focus him so hard. Yeah. But uh, time will tell, because right now he's sitting on about 4k. Net Worth is remaining pretty close at near the top, at the very least. And the gold graph remaining pretty close for this stage of the game, getting towards 40 minutes. You're talking less than 5,000 separating the teams. That, that's the kind of lead that can turn around in a heartbeat. So at this point, just a very close game of Dota, one of the closer games we've seen over the last 24 hours. But both teams are kind of playing defensive. You can see a little bit more swagger in LGD. They are spread out a little bit more, farming a little bit more pl places where, uh, while Fnatic kind of playing back. We are going to see Hani spotted out. He's got a lot of help. LGD has a lot of people up there. And Siler shows himself. Does it look like they're going to take the bait? Now check that. Fnatic is going to go ahead and rotate at least a couple up this way. Era. Yep, going to go that butterfly. Put it with his Scotty. And looks like LGD really trying to bait something out here. Just trying so hard to make them commit to the Weaver. And they will. Here we go. LGD waiting in the wings. Ready to drop the hammer. Honey. Punished quite badly for his audacity. And yeah, he's down for a minute now. This is guaranteed tower. Does he have buyback? If he doesn't have buyback, he doesn't. This might be Rax. What the hell was that? Yeah. It's like, that's all I have to say. Like, what was that? Honestly, like, why would you force that forward? <laughs> anyway, I think he meant to turn around. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But um, yeah, that's absolutely monstrously bad for them. Losing a tier 2 for no reason, losing Hani again before he gets his Hex. This is just buying LGD time that they didn't even need to get. And now because Hani's dead, they get a free Roshan. That kill honestly is like so bad for Fnatic that I think maybe one of their only chances of coming back into the game might have just been lost. I'm, I'm actually shocked that, that LGD didn't just push through. The amount of, of physical DPS they have right now to Melt Towers is gigantic. Just utterly gigantic. And I'm not, I really am just a little baffled that they did not just decide to say, hey, I mean, I, and sure, may, maybe they don't know that OD didn't have a buyback, but even if all you do is walk down the lane and he for, is forced to buy back, then you walk back the Roche and do what you were going to do anyway, because you have, um, you know, you have a Weaver with a Desolator and you're a, the armor reduction alone is enough to, uh, to bring Roche down quick fast, but nonetheless, stunned as you are, 9 to 14, and that last death, as you said, might well be one that we look back and remember as one that finally put this game out of reach, as simple as it might sound, but losing a Roche in a tier two, and not just a, a Roche, but a cheese Roche at that, but Dragonite snagging the cheese, just bad news, man. Could not have been in a worse time for it. Yeah, the thing is, though, this next push at LGD are mounting, they're going to feel confident because they have the Aegis, but the fact of the matter is, Era is going to have Butterfly, and the Hex is also done. So, well, actually, it does, does he have it? I don't... Oh, he actually doesn't have it. So he doesn't have the Hex, but the Butterfly is done. And there's a DD on Era in a bottle. Mm. So that can actually be a huge boon 
for Fnatic's base defense. I'm not sure if LGD want to try to push this or not. But the thing is, the later, the more chance you're actually giving Fnatic to come back. Right. Because the Shadow Fiend is going ultra hard carry items. Like Scotty, Butterfly, BKB. That's like some of the hardest carry you're going to see. So the next item that he gets, it could be an MKB. Um, he's probably not anticipating any butterflies on the side of uh, LGD except for Siler. But it's still a good damage item. Or you could just go Daedalus. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into Satanic after that. And that is like the de facto hard carry build. So um, I feel like Fnatic, as crazy as it sounds, they do have a chance. But man, they are really trying hard to eliminate themselves in this game. <laughs> Take a look at the gold after that debacle. Does show a significant jump, all told. 2,500 gold going in the way of LGD because of that. Now they're moving through them. They're gonna have a lasso. They're gonna grab one out and Zhao hey, drug back. Here we go, Yao gonna be able to get off the ulti. There's a Fisher to counter initiate. BKB's up on both sides, however. Song and the Siren gonna slow things down. They killed her off. LGD ends up getting caught out there's another shackle though they're going to reinitiate there's the astral imprisonment to buy time for era he will be able to dodge that out another good fisher though and dd showing off the blink trying to stun him out trixie behind him they're going to be able to clean him up and that's a triple kill now going the way of era who was saved in so many ways by honey throughout that fight lgd looked like they were going they had been caught out then it looked like they had the chance to add a kill or two and maybe Turn it around, if not break even, but by the end, Fnatic getting a much needed win. That's also the scythe of vice now complete on Hani. So the gold not going to waste. Oh, that was such a good song by Fly. Like, that seriously was such a good song because the Weaver hadn't BKB'd up until that point. Mm -hmm. The DK made the mistake of popping the BKB straight away, even though Lasso had already been used and they were focusing pretty heavily on Zhao 8. They just totally kept him alone. He used the cheese, died anyway, and then the BKB after on the Weaver, but by that time, they didn't have enough damage. So this Weaver definitely needs an MKB if he wants to be able to take out Era at this point, especially if you're putting the Ice Armor on top of the Butterfly Evasion. And yeah, Era is going for the lifesteal, so the next choice, um, he could just keep it a help for a while if he wanted to and go crit anyway. But some players like just going straight for the Satanic, and the DD also, the savior of that fight for Fnatic. Oh, very, yeah. very well done. Fnatic? Maybe feeling a little bit more confident. Now let's check and see. Yeah, you can see uh, the, the ground they made up with their the, the ground they lost to their debacle was basically made up with that um, with that fight. They did manage to put a dent in the experience as well. But again, we're getting to the point it's so late that these metrics are beginning to matter less and less. It's just going to become about who's able to execute and who's not. And Fnatic was definitely able to execute better than LGD in that last engagement. Take a look at the items across the board. We can see. That the Visage did complete his Scepter, so he's got another little buddy running around with him. Looks like it's going to be an Assault Cure-ass build coming out on Yao as he's added the plate mail to his BKB Shadow Blade inventory. Also have on the Windrunner, still saving up for that Scythe of Ice, and not far at all from it now. Really only needing a few hundred more gold. Her having that, again, just having an extra way to interrupt Era is a pretty big deal in and of itself. The OD to a lesser extent, but mostly just some other piece of lockdown to try and punish Era for coming in to try to use his ult. But finally, we get that long game we've been asking for. The longest game we've broadcasted so far, sitting at 44 minutes. And really, this game is not showing too many signs of being over anytime soon. Yeah, especially considering Era is going to have buyback for the next fight. And I believe Hani should, too, the next time they engage. Age is fading soon, so I don't think LGD is going to try to force it too hard. Um, it's getting to that point where the heroes like Earthshaker are being relied upon very heavily for getting a good Echo Slam or a good initiation of some sort. Like, it's going to come down to if a Hex goes off before a BKB from Hani, or if the counter initiation from the Earthshaker is good enough that the damage output from each team is so high now that you're going to get punished really hard for making a mistake. And of course, since it is 45 minutes in, also means your base is going to die faster, which makes your positioning even more important. So it's really stressful for both of these teams. That's why they're kind of adopting this passivity and making sure that their two important heroes on each side actually have buyback. But Windrunner getting a Hex now, that's huge for Zhao 8 means they can actually maybe focus era after this BKB goes down because obviously you can't evade uh, if you're a sheep. So maybe um, after that and the MKB now being completed on Siler, they might feel a bit confident here. Zhao 8 and company leading the way, looking to catch Fnatic out across the middle. Look at this, they're going to run right into each other. And he's going to blink, he's going to go, oh, nice Scythe of Ice, ow, what a beautiful Fissure follow-up Echo Slam. Fnatic! 
Forced to Song just to try and find some safety. They're going to mech BKB on Era just so he can teleport away. And without a doubt, DD has just been a phenomenal player this game. Bailing out after the Scythe, and the Scythe was super fast too. Can't say enough about Zhao Yi's reaction time there. Bailing him out, but the Fissure Echo Slam to follow it up and utterly disjoint Fnatic was just utterly tremendous. And LGD now waiting on a creep wave. Might feel like this is the time. We're going to see level 16 Elder Dragon form shown off. And LGD wants this tower. Era's there using raises as best as he can. Siler trading with Era. There's going to be the Shackle and a Fissure and the Soul Assumption after the side of Ice, but no! OD drops the hammer and forces LGD out. The lasso on Siler drags him back behind the racks. The rest of the fight rages on, but Siler locked down with that ensnare, and that's exactly what I was talking about during the draft, Draskal. Got it right that time, by the way. But that's exactly what I was talking about during the draft and why I wondered if that BKB was really the item he wanted to rush when he did. Fnatic has the answer to it. It was just so obvious whenever they had the Naga and the Lasso. And really just a beautiful piece of initiation on both sides. The counter initiation coming out of Hani. And on the other side, more excellent play out of Earthshaker handled by DD. But in the end, Fnatic punishing LGD for trying to roll the dice. They're going to take their first tier two of the game. We're coming up on 50 minutes and this is an absolute barn burner. Yeah, this is by far the best game that I've personally had the pleasure of casting so far at uh, TI3. And I am really impressed with Fnatic's play, but we talked oh, yeah. about it, man. It's like the later the game goes, Shadow Fiend is going a very hard carry build. And not the the other heroes on LGD aren't really doing that. I mean, BKB and Shadow Blade on the DK, that's not really a hard carry build per se. Even the Weaver, he's got Desolator MKB, but he has no evasion. So Era still beats him down just as badly as he hits Era. And the unfortunate part is, Era has a heck of a lot more armor because he's got a Lich on his team. So, I think that Fnatic are actually in really good shape. Fnatic, here we go, we're gonna have Trixie caught out. Song of the Sirens there, such a short cooldown. And, oh, Trixie actually did get, did get uh, Astral in prison there. And didn't think he was gonna make it out in time, but he did. Nonetheless, Fly. Being pursued out, and they're going to re-engage. Here we go. BKB's off on both sides. Era just laying into Yao. Going to think better of it, though. They can they burst in? They can't. And DD just pounding the ground in frustration as he watches Era get away. And LGD loses a Tier 3, but as banged up as it might be, the racks still stand. So both of these teams just going back and forth, a truly pendulous game. And yeah, look and look at this. 50 minutes in, the gold graph is as close to zero as it has been for almost an hour. The experience has swung in favor of Fnatic, but 5,000 experience when you have heroes this high level, really not all that much. And yeah, Fnatic holding the line, but a little bit of an overextension of their own, and LGD able to extend this game. Freaking Trixie, man. <laughs> Trixie is just like balls of steel, just blinks into a tier four. He's like, I got it, guys. And then has to bail him out so yep. all in all could have gone a heck of a lot worse unfortunately no tail paying the price uh, poor lich man what are you gonna do but um era he's being given more room uh what did he just buy did he go crit yeah he did okay so he's actually gonna drop the tp and just go crit i thought that he might finish satanic just so he could always carry a tp but the fact of the matter is Fnatic have been sitting on their side of the map more than they've been on lgds yep. so you don't really need a tp as badly if you're not worrying about split push and right. neither of these teams is ever going to split push because of one five versus five that you lose and the game can potentially be over right so i do like that choice actually quite a bit from era just to pick up the crit instead for the extra damage and trixie just loves living life on the edge he's just <laughs> flying around right now with a haste rune and i i don't know how he does it but farming the enemy's jungle with a haste rune at 50 minutes <laughs> when one boss team bike will lose the game it's fine trixie's got it gotta make sure he gets uh you know he gets his extra gold up trixie actually has four thousand gold so dude is certainly stacked up yeah, I, this this point in the game, it's anyone's to take, really. It's all going to depend on the initiation, but even in that sense, I would probably give Fnatic an advantage. Trixie going to be caught with the Fissure for staff. Make sure he stays safe, however. And both teams giving Roshan a lot of attention. Big boys, a drama queen. <laughs> Loves it. When people pay attention with him being back up. And past this point of the game, cheese in his inventory. Cheese is, and you know, cheese is a pretty big deal. I mean, it's, it's easy to underestimate. Is Siler going to be leading the way? 
And I really want to see how LGD wants to play this. I mean, with his MKB up, he's doing a tremendous amount of damage. But Fnatic's just playing so patient. This is what they, uh, they affectionately refer to themselves as Rat Dota. Yeah, and the next team fight is going to be absolutely huge because this Roshan could be enough to just push LGD over the edge and being able to take the game. And likewise for Fnatic, if they get Roshan somehow, they probably would just straight up take a Raxman because it's completely naked. Like the tier 3 for Fnatic mid is actually still standing. The one thing too is that both teams have full vision of this pit and neither of them are willing to concede the positional advantage even a little. Yep. Like they don't want any part of this. The one thing though that's kind of a bummer for Fnatic is top lane is pushing really hard. Like there are half a dozen range creeps up here and two catapults. So eventually that's going to have to be addressed. And LGD, they're going to smoke. There's no vision in terms of sentries down around the river. So this could be really bad for Fnatic if they get caught out. We're going to go ahead and give the end around. Fnatic is moving forward for the moment. They may have a chance. Oh, Hani. Hani's moving in that general direction. Are they going to get there in time? And, oh, he's farming the camp. LGD has got eyes on him. Here we go. There's a scythe of ice and the shackle. Shackle does last despite the force staff. Now gets it back to the team. Force staff's trying to save him. There's the song of the siren. Hani will be astral in prison to save himself. Do they want to initiate or are they just going to wait? Here comes Zara and the ulti is there. There's the lasso, gonna grab out Yao, dragging it back. In the meantime, let's all bouncing around. BKB's on both sides, making it hard to fight. Siler laying into Era. Era down to a quarter health. Era's gonna end up dropping. And with his damage gone, Fnatic has to be very careful. They are gonna pursue this out and try to clean it up. We're gonna see DDC scythed out. Two for two, the current trade. He wanders into the woods as a little piggy. And finally, one Frost Blast, enough to get the job done. Xiao 8 will be withdrawing. As soon as Era dropped, it was a question of if they were going to have the damage. Now there's a buyback from Weaver. And the Dragon Knight as well. And perhaps realizing there's no buyback for 30 seconds on, uh, on the Shadow Fiend. They could rush Roshan right now. And no doubt they could melt him. Yep, that's what they're going to do. I think they just figured it out that he just doesn't have it right now. And with him not, if he had it, he would have used it that close to the base. Instead, they rush into Roshan. Siler's there with, along with Yao. This is going to be a Rosh going the way of LGD. So even though they lost the fight, they're going to win the battle. Yeah, it's just unfortunate for Fnatic. They, they focused Era so hard during that fight that they lost their DK and the Weaver when Era died. Like, that's how heavy they really wanted to go for him. And yep. Honestly... That fight still probably could have gone better. The position that they were in, like the Shadow Fiend, no matter where he went, he was going to get shackled mm. because he was just standing in the middle of, I don't know, 20 million trees. So LGD definitely coming out ahead in the end. And MKB is going to be done on Zhao 8 as well, which means that his focus fire is going to start hurting Era quite a bit too. And since he's died multiple times and been forced to buy out, he's still not close to finishing a Satanic yet, and he really needs it. Like I would say a while ago, maybe 10 minutes, he might just want to go for the Daedalus, but now he needs a Satanic just just to live. If he can get that before LGD amount to push, then he would probably be able to sustain it. But without it, I think LGD might just have enough to crack the mid lane. Such a close game. And again, look at the gold grab. After all the action coming up now on an hour long game, hovering near zero, the experience utterly negligible. At, a, at 55 minutes in, just truly negligible. But a true slugfest and this is the LGD I think most people expected to see, just not the Fnatic most people expected to see. And if you're fans of Western Dota, gotta be happy seeing them not only take game one, but even no matter the result of this game, just have such a phenomenal game. Their execution has been very good. It's been a pleasure to watch. Era, as you had mentioned, really wanting a little bit more survivability than he has at the moment. His damage is certainly not lacking, hitting four in it around uh, 350 damage at this point. Fnatic did lose their courier during amidst all that too, but it looks like it just respawned. Yeah, when they originally used the song, when the BKBs were up on the Weaver and the DK, uh, one of them just killed it. I think the Weaver just hit it once and it died, and that's kind of what happens to couriers at 55 minutes into the game. <laughs> they don't actually scale that well, believe it or not, <laughs> and they just kind of instantly die, so. Um, Fnatic though, they're forcing their position on the map. They need to be careful though, because Era doesn't have a TP. And LGD are sitting very, very close to the base, and Eric can't afford to sell any of his items either, so he's going to have to uh, hoof it back. 
But Hani, on the other hand, he can actually TP, and he's actually very close to a Shiva's too. And the more NT he has, the better, of course, uh, Sanity's Eclipse is going to be. So his ultimate is actually going to be relatively pivotal here. It's going to mana burn heroes like the Windrunner, and it's going to like almost instantly kill poor DD because Earthshaker is just not that smart of a guy. <laughs> it's alright. He tries hard there, man. Tries. He's got, got a good heart. Bless his heart. But um, Hani will go ahead and. Retreat back to the house. So Fnatic continuing to play defensive, and LGD is actually going to pull back. And, you know, looking for an opening. I mean, the, the inventories are basically full everywhere. Windrunner is now transitioning to full semi-carry, having picked up a Demon Edge, looking to just contribute extra damage. Focus Fire actually does become pretty okay once you begin to decide to build a little bit of damage. And it's a throwback. There was a game that was like this a long time ago. I want to say it was D2L Season 2. We saw Windrunner end up transitioning to semi-carry and actually built a rapier after going for Staff Mechanism Scythe of Ice. But, um, yeah, I mean, both teams do have fairly adequate, fairly even late game potential, no doubt about it. The hard carry potential out of era, of course, tops on the board, but, yeah, like, and, and this is this is where it's... You know, you start to look at little things like just how valuable is Lich Armor, and you really just can't underestimate it. That bonus armor of 9, whenever it's now getting to a point where everyone's just doing a lot of damage, like, that actually makes a pretty big difference for heroes. It makes a pretty big difference for someone you want to keep alive, like a Naga Siren, for example. Yeah, I think, um... Era is going all in. Like, he <laughs> bought the Satanic recipe. Is sitting in the stash. He is 350 away from finishing up the Satanic. If he gets that, I don't know if LGD can actually kill him. Yeah. I don't think he's a mortal man anymore. I think he has transcended and, and become a, a greater being than mortal. So, if he does get it and LGD want to try to push, which I'm sure they will, there's only like a minute left actually on the Aegis. I think LGD are actually playing this too passive. I don't think they're doing enough to justify what their position is on the map. Like, they could go for mid right now before Era gets another item. I think they've had a window of opportunity here that they might have just missed. But when that Satanic's done, when the Shivas is done on Hani, things are going to be tough. Even with just having a cheese, I don't think that's going to be the make or break. I think Fnatic's team fight in the late game is just going to be superior. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, and again, whenever you just begin to look at things, and it's the same factors, and when I say look at them, I don't mean they, that they've been irrelevant until now. I mean, oh, another courier, courier kill. <laughs> Siler just killing couriers, it's fine. Uh, he's farming couriers as they need to farm creeps. Oh, that's so bad. That's a satanic that they don't have. Oh. That, that's like, yeah, oh, that's I didn't, I didn't not the, having the satanic. I didn't see that had his reaver on it. I thought it was on the way to the secret shop, not on the way back. Oh, no. That is horrible, and he's not going to have buyback. Because he just spent all that money. This Radiant is horrendous. They're going to glyph it. And that courier snipe might be the most significant event of the entire game. Whenever I, whenever I saw it, I laughed about it because I thought it was heading to the shop. And that would have been bad enough. But coming well, back... get your courier timers out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sitting at... Uh, however long, here we go. Oh, they just managed to pick, pick off Naga Siren, who buys back immediately. And they're just going to slow push this out. And LGD, I wonder if they, I wonder if they know. If they figured it out, there's going to be the last. They're going to try to drag back Shell 8. Shell 8 Scythe is spiced out. There's the, hey, they are able to clean him up. Now the BKBs are up. Song of the Siren. Right there. They've got two grouped up in Yao and Siler. Let's see what they want to do with it. Uh, not much, it seems. They're up. No, oh, never mind. OD ulti does some damage, but Hani now being reengaged. engaged Hani's going to be four staffed away. Echo Slam off the mark. Trixie four staffed away. And LGD. With Siler back up now, they're going to re-engage. Era locked down, and if Era drops, he will be dropping. No! Force Staff got him just out of the way. But finally, Siler's there to clean him up. No buyback for him. And they're going to realize that whether they knew it or not, he's down for a full 90. Siler now overextending, getting caught out. There's another good Fisher, but a good Shackle as well. They're going to lock Siler down. However, OD drops on the backside of it. No tail. About to die. Force Staffs are everywhere on this map. And they managed to clean him up with one last power shot, two buybacks. 70 seconds on the Lich, 65 on the Shadow Fiend. And there's a Shackle, doesn't latch. Fnatic doing what they can. Look at this creep wave at bottom, my god. They don't even have to worry about this. Look at it at top. They don't have to do anything. The creeps everywhere. And now they're going to lasso out Yao. Yell drug back, they just don't have the damage. They've got him down to half, but Siler's gonna be there to help try to clean things up. No, never mind. I thought Jow 8 was gonna try to engage off of that. But up at top, the creep's still doing work. 
Side the vice on the one. There's a, there's a two man, two man Fisher. And the creeps just gigantic, just going to town at this point. They managed to bring down yet another Rax. That's going to be the second one. Look at top. Cleared off by nothing but Rax. And all of this, this catastrophe, this calamity that has befallen Fnatic, all began with a little courier, a little zebra who died right about here. All of it. And now it's back up. Radiant Courier is back up. It's okay. The Zonkey wasn't your fault, buddy. Wasn't your that fault, That Courier buddy. kill literally won LGD the game. Like, that, there was no way LGD were winning that fight if Era had a Satanic. It took so long for them to kill him that they had to buy back, and Zhao Wei made it back to the base mm -hmm. by the time that he was dead. So, yeah, that Courier kill, um, whoever did it, you won your team the game. Siler. It was. I, I saw it happen. Like that, that was the funny thing. I saw it happen and chuckled because I thought again it was on the way to the secret shop, not on the way back. Yeah, Siler, uh, pretty pretty good at killing couriers. Pretty good at it. Twenty-one to twenty-six. It's been a forty-seven kill game that's taken us sixty-two minutes to get going. This is your last desperation push. And funny thing is, the experience is basically exactly where it was 62 minutes, 13 seconds ago, dead even. The gold, however, of course, favoring one team over another. But, yeah, they're not going to be able to do anything but try to push and just hope that that satanic is going to be... Basically, they have to outrace the creeps. Now, let's see who's got TPs. They may have to TP someone home to try and keep the, the megas off of them. And they're going to have a song and a siren, of course, up and ready to go. Trixie going to look for a target. Smoked up. And they're going to have to hurry. Yep, there we go. They're going to manage to drag one back. That's going to be DDC. He's cleaned up right off the bat. Shackle caught two, though. And they're going to follow it up with all the damage. All the damage thrown out and caught three. Now the Lich all goes off. Interrupted, however. And... Ulti does the damage. Era using the Satanic, trying to take through all of this. Siler and Era going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Looks like Siler going to cheese through it. No, that was a time lapse. And with him down once again... This will be your GG. There it comes. A 63-minute barn burner. An absolute madhouse that all came down in the end to one little bug killing one little zonky. What a game, Draskal. Man, Fnatic had that game. Like, they really did. They were really going to win because that Satanic was going to be enough to defend the base. Siler didn't have a butterfly the first time they pushed in. Well, I shouldn't say first time, but like the second or third time they went in. Which means that the Satanic would have healed Era for so much more, he would have been able to sustain that fight. The butterfly was finished after the entire base died, because who would have thought killing your entire opponent's base gives you a lot of money? And then he missed a couple of attacks and he couldn't really sustain the damage anymore. So, congratulations to LGD. Siler, definitely my MVP, man. That courier kill... That was so clutch. That was 4,300 gold that they lost when that courier died, basically. And Era not even having the buyout for it. Yep. The decision to go Satanic was the right one. Like, he right. was he was right for not saving for buyback and going for it, but just really unfortunate that Fnatic couldn't end the game uh, right after he bought that item and defend the base. So, it goes 1-1. One, one. That's actually our first split, I think, we've had that you and I have casted together. Yeah, it is, so actually. That's, that's uh... Yeah, that's interesting. But LGD get a win, so I believe they are now four and four, whereas Fnatic end this six and two. And a special shout out just to build on what you said. First of all, Siler finishing ten three and fifteen, as you mentioned. I mean, had just had a great game aside from the, the MVP moment there at the end. But uh, but Earthshaker, Earthshaker played by DD, I felt like had a phenomenal game. Sh Earthshaker is one of those heroes that to play him effectively, like to play him's not hard. To play him as effectively as DD did takes so much practice, skill, talent, and coordination with your teammates. And uh, yeah, I just anytime I see a well played Earthshaker, it makes me a happy panda because I like Earthshaker quite a bit. Nonetheless, our first series is in the books. We're a bit over time. It's all right. We started a little bit late. We still got tons and tons and tons of good Dota ahead. Our next match going to be another East versus West matchup. Going to be a team from the West who's already downed a team from the East. In fact, that's going to be Team Liquid taking on Rattlesnake. That's going to be coming up probably not long from now, just a few minutes. And then we keep things rolling after that with LGD versus Mouse and three more other matches. So make sure you stick around for that, guys. Again, I may see that Straskel will be right back with Team Liquid taking on Rattlesnake coming up next.